All right. Well, we've got a question to kick things off this week, Brian, from Make Right Stuff. And Make Right Stuff is asking us if you could bring back any discontinued pen you sold before, Ooh. what would it be? So we have to have sold it previously. Okay. That's you know what I appreciate I appreciate having more parameters because you know I would follow. You know it up. that person has been watching this show. They know that I feel seen. Brian needs rails. I feel seen here by make right stuff. Um, no, it was good. And, and truth be told, Drew put his notes in here first, so I was like, hmm. That's fine. You're the you're okay. the you're the primary answerer Fair on enough. this Fair one. Enough. So you 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 go. I'll, well, I'll chime I've, in. I have some that that kind of overlap with yours a little bit, but I actually came up with some completely different ones. So you and I have some different stuff to talk about, which is cool. So this one is is not one that probably a lot of people are going to know about, but Lamy with their studio before they had the Imperial Blue, which has been years now. They had a different blue, which was much more of like a true Goulet blue color. Uh, I think they only had it for maybe a year or two uh, when we first started carrying them until they changed to the Imperial blue. So, I mean, it's, it's really been like a decade since this was changed, but I have one of those OG ones. Uh, and so I absolutely love it. I can't remember what it was called. It was not Imperial blue. It was called something else. I'm really bad with names, but um, for sure. Was it, it wasn't Ocean Blue, right? That was the Safari. That was the Safari. Or the All Star. Well, yeah, there's the All Star, but no, it was. Anyway, it was a bright blue. I'm sure we have a picture of it. I know I have one uh, because I kept it because I was like, well, this. Yeah, I remember those. Blue. Yeah. So um, if we had known at the time that it was going to go away, then I would have been like, oh my gosh, let's buy a million of them. Uh, but anyway, so that's really cool. And uh, the Imperial Blue is really nice too. It's a nice navy blue. I'm sure it's probably a, actually a more popular blue. Uh, but uh, of course, my own heart speaks to that classic, like cobalt blue color. Um, so there's that one. There's the um, Pilot Vanishing Point Twilight. That was one of that. That was my favorite Vanishing Point that I think we've ever seen. I do like the matte black a lot. So um, I would say if the matte black had been a special edition that went away or a limited edition, then I would be really in love with that. But because we still have it, you know. The, the twilight feels so special because it was only here. So it was a it was a gradient uh, from like a teal, like a turquoise to a purple. Beautiful pen, kind of an ombre effect. Uh, it was in 2016. Oh, I can't remember, but anyway. I don't, I don't know. I think, I think we have a blog years. post on it. Sorry, I didn't look up the, the year, but it was a limited edition. So they only made 2016, 15, whatever of them. It was a number of years ago, but I would totally bring that back as a regular edition if I could. Um, another one, this is one that we <laughs> technically sold like a couple of. We had it on our website for a good five or seven years, but we barely ever got any of them. And we just recently found out that we're not going to get any more because they're not going to make them. Really, it's just, well, I'll go ahead and tell you what it is. It's the Namiki Yukari Nightline Moonlight. Beautiful pen. Uh, very sad because we... I feel like we never got to see its potential because basically we we I'm, I mean I think maybe we ever got three pens in over the years. It was like we would have and they sold instantly. Oh yeah, because we have so many people on the wait list because there was so much time that went in between. We would get one in and it was like, how in the world do we choose? Do we hold to wait to get more? And we were like, it's only been like three years since we'd gotten one, so we'd get one in, and then we'd sell it. It'd be gone in four minutes, and then it'd be like, dang it, you know, and then the list would start over again. So beautiful pen. Oh, I just wish we could have them all day long. Um, another one, this was one that uh, was an exclusive that we did with Monograppa. Uh, it was cool. They like found some nibs. They had some leftover true celluloid material. And it was like, okay, what are what can we mix, mix up and kind of do as an exclusive here? So we didn't have a whole ton of these, but uh, I did really love this pen. It was the Monograppa Shiny Lines with a Dove nib. It was the extra 130 model. Oh, that pen was just beautiful. That rodden, that str it wasn't rodden, sorry. It kind of looked like rodden, but it was that stripey kind of a celluloid. Um, kind of like you think about Pelican with those like little stripes that they have in there. It kind of looked like that effect, but it was this beautiful like silver and, and white kind of a material. Oh, it just looks so good. And it was like the kind of celluloid that they just don't make anymore. So it was an honor to be able to have that pen at all. And they sold pretty well and we didn't have a ton of them, but then they were gone and I did keep one of those though. I'm glad I did. Um, and then I've got another one here that overlaps with yours, so I won't spoil it. Um, and then I know you mentioned an all-star, so I won't say that all-star, but I will say the ruby red all-star was a great one. 
Um, also a big fan of the uh, copper orange color. That was beautiful. And, and the copper orange ink. We only ever got like 30 bottles of that copper orange ink, but that ink was awesome. Man, really I love that ink. And we never really got the dark to see lilac. Its potential. The dark lilac ink always gets it always has this reputation for oh, yeah. being sought after, but they they sleep on the uh um the orange. Well, I think the orange ink literally there was just never enough of it for people to even know about it. Um uh, the dark yeah. lilac there was at least enough of it for it to get out there and for the Good hype point. machine to get rolling. Um but I mean the copper orange is a stunner. If you ever come across that ink, get it because it's awesome. Uh, and then, of course, the Safari Dark Lilac. Um, you know, they did come out with the purple candy one, which was pretty close, but that OG Dark Lilac was awesome, especially the ink to go along with it, you know? So um, a lot of good past like Lamy editions and stuff like that. If we, a Q&A like this a couple of years ago, I would have said, you know, the OG Safaris, the um, ones that they ended up doing, the Savannah, and uh, especially and in the Terra, which they did bring those back. And I was just like, I never thought I would see the day. So that was pretty awesome. So I'm like, you never know. You never know what they might bring back. I mean, it's the first time they've ever brought any of those back after what, 40 years or 35 years or something like that. But hey, no, it was like, yeah, it was like 40 years because it was 1980 was the first year they came out with the Safari. So crazy. But anyway, those are some of the ones that I would bring back. All of those we sold, all of them. All of them that I mentioned here, I have because I kept every single one because I loved them all. So, um, except nice. for the one that you're gonna mention first, which is one of my biggest pen regrets. I know, same here, mm -hmm. same here. And that would be the Pilot Stargazer. Yep. This pen was a small pen. It had just the perfect amount of subtle sparkle within the resin. There were only, I think, three or four colors. There was a white, a burgundy, a blue. Mm -hmm. Um, that might have been it actually, but it was I think more it was a black or less. Too. I think it was. There I might think have been a black. Colors, yeah, yeah. About four colors. It was more or less a slightly larger, heavier duty gold nib version of the Pilot Prera. The capping action was very similar. It had you know almost a pocket pen feel to it, but not quite. But it was it was a smaller pen, but it did have a tiny little gold nib on there, and it just looked good, and I regret it too. And I told myself, and I might, I told you and Rachel too, I'm like, oh, they're just continuing the Stargazer. I gotta pick one of those up. And I just never did, and I've been looking for it ever since. Looked for it at the pen show this past weekend, still couldn't find it. I've checked on eBay, there's hardly any listings for it. I can't, I don't even know what the average resale price for them are, but I would love for Pilot to bring back the Stargazer. Mm -hmm. And one that was probably one of your first uh, thoughts, Brian, that you probably omitted because I had it on here first was the Platinum PTL 5000A. Now this pen has come and gone twice yeah. now, and both times it reigned supreme, short-lived as the most affordable gold nib we carried. Mm -hmm. And it was just a great way to have someone purchase a gold nib at an affordable price and it performed excellently. It's a platinum pen and they perform really, really well. And this was no exception. So it was uh, normally right at that $100 price point too, which- It was sub $100. Um, I want to say it was like 80 Yeah, I want to say it was like 89 or eight. Yeah, it was it was. It's the only sub $100 gold nib pen that we've probably ever carried. Yeah, it was truly something. So I don't know, it, it, it came back once already. Maybe it'll come back a, th I mean, a second time. So like, time. I liked that because the price was so good. As a pen, like it was very light, it was very thin. So it was like, it was yeah. a great value, which I loved it You're for paying that. for the nib. Yeah, but like if that, if they came out with that pen now and it was the same price as, you know, a Stargazer or a, a VP or something like that, I'd be like, nah. Pass. No, I want it because it was under hundred dollars. Yeah, it was, it was, it was right yeah, at hundred dollars. That, that if this, if it could come back for ninety nine ninety nine, absolutely That'd be all day awesome. long. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I know this is an unrealistic dream, but <laughs> at one point uh, we sold a Delta Unica, which was a more or less flat pen that kind of mm -hmm. um, arced upward. Uh, you know, kind of flared out, had a kind of flat top on it. But for a very short time, we sold a celluloid version of this pen, and it had a steel nib. But I do believe, Brian, it was under $100 yes. for a, a true Italian celluloid. Basi and basically, we screwed up. Like It, it, it was a mistake. They, they wouldn't, should not have made that for us, and we did not know what we had when we had it. No, so we did not. it was not. kind of a bunch of mistakes all around. That pen basically should not have happened, especially for that price. So It was a, it was a criminally good deal. It was. And did you keep one of those, Brian? I did, yeah. The celluloid? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good man. I did. Good man. Yeah. Any, I should have. Any exclusive that we ever do, I keep just 
in every color because I'm like, yeah. the odds of ever being able to find this again are going to be almost not only fun. that, but it was a Delta orange celluloid. Yeah, it was like the same like, celluloid with, they use on their Dolce Vitas and stuff. Yeah, but it was 100 percent like the, even the Dolce Vita is not a Dolce Vita. They, even that band's not 100 percent celluloid. I think they, so use, I think they used just, to be, but then as, that's as right, celluloid yeah. became rarer and rarer, they yeah. moved away from doing it. Yeah, yeah. But there was no trim or anything. It was just a just a hunk of cellular. Yeah, it was very very minimalist, kind of like an Edison pen. It was like that kind of a minimalist mm -hmm. look. But it was ah okay. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm getting upset. <laughs> okay. Um, and then and then the one that Brian did mention, my favorite Lamy All Star color, the Coffee All Star, which was what a this, shocker. Like, beautiful, beautiful like matte cocoa. It was like it a, the color of hot, hot chocolate. It is a stunner of a pen. I oh, like. Oh man, that's a that is a brown pen that I can get behind. Like that is done right. That one's. Good. It is. It's a very good, good one. It's a very good one. Um, what about the brown vanishing point, Brian? Because I would like for that one to come back too. That one is one that I will not get behind because it looks. Oh come on! Me, it looks so professional. It looks like a shiny. It was it like, looks like a shiny turd. It's just completely. No. It's completely flat. There's nothing no. going on with it. It looked executive. It looked kind of turn of the century, mid century, modern okay. executive. I, I okay. loved it. like Madison Avenue, old school. Yeah, man. I think that so that did that had the chrome trim, didn't it? I yeah. think that with gold trim would actually look a little sharper. The brown uh, with the gold that to me would look more of that like classic executive kind of a look. Okay, fair enough. I, I'll take. Oh, I said fair enough. Uh, <laughs> I agree with that. I don't. I'm not, I think, I'm not I don't even know, the brown with disagree. Brown with the chrome to me just it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it all. I'll take anything. If you want to bring back a brown vanishing point in any way, yes, please. I'll take. You, I'll take that one over the yellow. The yellow was like mm, not not so hot in my opinion. The yellow I liked movie. the yellow too. Yeah. I also thought that looked because I think the vanishing point overall has this kind of World's Fair style vibe to it. So I think that a brown or a yellow, one of those more vintagey colors, really works well with the with the overall aesthetic. You know, something okay. that like honestly, if they wanted to make a funky pistachio like you would see on old appliances. I think that would do well too. Like I think that that, that chrome like an avocado kind of, color. Yeah, I, I mean, really the do. Yellow, I think that the that, yellow think, that they had was like autumn harvest. It like looked like yeah, that exactly. color. Yeah, exactly. And I think that totally works. If you look at the clip and the profile, mm. it, it, it mimics you know, that whole world of tomorrow sort of vibe. And I dig it. It does and have I, a little bit of that vibe, yeah. 100%. Carousel, 100%. Carousel I think, of Progress I think that, vibe, yeah. Yes, bring it, please. <laughs> it's Give a me more great, vintage big, inspired. beautiful tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, man. You know how it goes. So that's my list. I think that's pretty solid. That is a pretty solid list, Drew, I gotta say. 